it, it all comes down to that Parliament uh, dragged its feet. It's left things to the last minute. And that's why it's made this, it's, frankly, it's an unworkable solution. South Africa's parliament is currently reviewing draft legislation that will change the country's electoral system. What will be the implications of this for South Africa's democracy? I pose this question to Marius Ruert of the Institute of Race Relations in an upcoming episode of my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara. What follows is a short extract from our longer conversation. The full discussion will be available on Sunday. Enjoy. Okay, Marius, well, let's talk about that in more detail. The has been this constitutional court case and the judgment came out, was it last year or already? 2020. 2020. Uh, forgive me, I'm losing track of time with COVID. Um, but, you know, and that essentially mandated Parliament to amend the Electoral Act. We now have this proposed uh, draft legislation and uh, you have drafted this proposal, the submission uh, to the Home Affairs Portfolio Committee to express concerns with that. But let's start at the beginning. What, what was the Constitutional Court's uh, directives in terms of its judgment? So the background to it is, uh, I think there was an organization called the New Nation Movement. Uh, they brought a, a court challenge uh, to the, I think it, I'm not sure where it started, but it ended in the Constitutional Court, uh, saying that individuals at the moment cannot stand or individuals or independents, wherever you want to characterize it, cannot stand for parliaments or any of the provincial legislatures. As I said earlier, in, at ward level, with municipal level, you can because you can stand as an individual in your particular ward and run for the council, but you can't do that at parliament uh, for parliament or the provincial legislatures. So that, that, that was the court challenge that was brought. It was... Um, uh, it's all, uh, I think the, basically what it came down to was that it was uh, going against somebody's freedom of association because while we are free to associate with anybody we want, we should also be free to not associate. And as it stands now, you have to be a member of a political party to stand for parliament or uh, any of the non provincial legislatures. And that's basically what this ruling came down to. The Constitutional Court said that parliament had to amend the legislation within two years. So the deadline's coming up now in June this year. And um, uh, the, to be honest, the Parliament uh, and uh, the Home Affairs and so on, they've been dragging their feet uh, quite significantly. There's been some work done on it, but there's only parliamentary hearings now, and this legislation has to be finalised within three months. And we're still having parliamentary uh, hearings at the moment. Uh, we, we haven't had any public hearings. So it's going to be a very tight race, I think, to get this legislation uh, completed. And uh, it has to be done. Uh, it's all going to be done very soon because we need to give the IEC time, d depending on whatever system we finally decide to go to. It's, everything's got to be finalized by later, say, September next year to, because we have an election that's going to be, have to be held by about the middle of 2024. So all kinds of things have to be finalized fairly soon, whether it's... Uh, constituency boundaries, uh, ballot papers, a new electoral system, or whatever the case may be. So things have been uh, uh, left for uh, quite long, to be honest, and uh, it's uh, quite a failing on the part of Parliament. All right, so there are some procedural problems there with the consultation process, but what about the proposal itself? Uh, what is the uh, detail that, that's on the table there? So what's happened is the new electoral amendment, it's basically gone for, it's meeting the uh, letter of the constitutional ruling, but not meeting the spirit of it. Uh, what it's basically uh, proposing is to uh, just bolt independence onto a proportional representation system. So what, what it's been proposed is that uh, the nine provinces will be broken into basically what will be a nine multi-member constituencies. And people will be able to stand in these various constituencies uh, 200 seats, uh, 200 parliamentary seats will be elected from the nine constituencies, obviously depending on the uh, population of each province, uh, it'll depend how many uh, parliamentary, parliamentarians are sent to parliament, whether it's in Cape Town or who knows who's going to be following what happened in January. But uh, MP, I'm um, sorry, independents will be able to stand in these, um, in the nine multi-member constituencies, which is basically the nine provinces, but they'll be running against uh, uh, po political parties at the same time. Uh, but this is a bit of a logical nonsense. It's basically making independence, it's adding independence to a proportional representation system without actually allowing independence or individuals to uh, stand uh, in, in a way that makes it fair and makes it uh, and puts independence on the same footing as 
uh, political party. Uh, it's going to, it'll uh, lead to some rather dist distorted outcomes. It's probably going to break proportionality, which is a big problem because the only requirement in the constitution for our electoral system is that in general uh, proportional. This is not going to happen uh, with the current system. And another issue is that uh, we're going to have 200 seats elected from the nine provinces. We're going to have another 200 seats, which are called compensatory systems in the legislature, legislature excuse me, uh, and, the, and that's another 200 seats, and these are going to be decided on um, using proportional representation. However, these compensatory seats uh, are going to be calculated without taking into account the votes for independence. So it'll actually be a, a, a political party could actually get a seat in parliament with fewer votes than an independent gained. Uh, in, in, in the same election. So that's simply not fair. At the same time, uh, independents aren't going to be, uh, uh, they're not going to be allowed to gain, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, um, more than one seat. So for example, uh, the, if a political party receives, uh, say, two, uh, 200,000 votes, and that is equal to four seats in parliament, if that same independent gets 200,000 votes, they are only entitled to the one vote or the one seat in parliament for themselves. So that's also, that's going to lead to a lot of wasted votes, which is going to be a problem in our proportional representation system. As I say, it's going to break proportionality. And there's a whole bunch of um, other issues with the legisl legislation, with the a proposed um, formula to work out the quota of seats and so on. It uh, disadvantages independence, which is, yeah, it's, it's simply not fair to independence. People who want to run and it's something that definitely uh, has to be uh, considered. Uh, there's also um, some other problems. Independents have to, when they want to stand, they're going to have to jump through some hoops that somebody running on a political party list is not going to uh, have to do. You know, they're going to have to get a certain amount of uh, uh, signatures to allow them to stand. Obviously, somebody who's standing in a, a for a political party won't have to do that. Another issue, the as the legislation stands, is that if in a, an independent resigns or dies um, in uh, and re or results from parliament, they aren't going to have to, they, there won't be any by-election and that person won't be replaced. Um, you obviously can't replace uh, somebody without a by-election. You can't just make, if they were elected as an independent. So that's another problem. So there are some serious flaws with this uh, legislation. Uh, if you also um, look at how the quota is calculated as uh, the current, the proposed quota for the legislation is different from the current quota, the, uh, the current uh, formula that we use uh, to elect parliamentarians. And this will actually, the, how it stands now, is that um, larger parties are, uh, could actually uh, benefit from the new legislation. It's quite possible now, uh, according to some people who've uh, done the maths on this, that a party like the ANC could actually, as it currently stands, get 20 or 30 seats more than they would be entitled to uh, from the overall uh, vote share because of the new formula and because of the way independents are being disadvantaged. So that is also going to break proportionality and it's actually quite a big problem and it's something that um, yeah, a lot of people have raised concerns and it, it all comes down to that parliament uh, dragged its feet, it's left things to the last minute and that's why it's made this, it's, frankly, it's an unworkable solution and it's, yeah, it's going to cause some problems. I foresee that there's probably going to be constitutional court challenges to it because, as I say, it's breaking proportionality, which is the only requirement in the constitution for our electoral system. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very big problem, and I think we're going to see some fights ahead uh, on this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to check out the full discussion with Marius Ruert. That will be going live on Sunday morning on my other channel, you can subscribe to that channel over here. In the meantime, please do leave your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you make of these proposed amendments to the Electoral Act? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.